Good afternoon. It's time on a Thursday for collective worship again. And so we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. It's good to be with you again on such a gloriously sunny day. I, I thought about going outside to record this, um, but it's a bit too sunny even for that, isn't it? It's nice to have the sunshine. Um, did you know that the church has its own special calendar? Did you know that? Each week has its own special name. And this week is the second week after Trinity. Uh, and often individual days are used to celebrate or remember particular people in this calendar. Now, what you also probably know is that as well as having a boring calendar in a book, which tells us all the details, we also in the church have a system of colour coding to help people remember what time of year it is. Now, the Sundays after Trinity are usually green weeks. And look, here's my green stole. It's got sheep on it. This is what I wear in church during green weeks to show people that it's Trinity season. Uh, but sometimes the people we remember on a particular day are so special that we change the colour of uh, our uh, church hangings and fabrics and we change the colour of what we wear. And for particular people, we use a red stole. Uh, with all these great sparkly uh, glittery colours on. It's fantastic, isn't it? I'm just going to pop this on. So this is how I would wear it in church. It goes round my neck and all the lovely decoration hangs down by my legs. And we wear the red one when we're celebrating a particular person um, who is important in the life of the church. Usually it's for somebody who is a saint. And even more particularly, it's for a saint who died because of their faith. So... Um, we wear it for particular saints days and in a few days there is a really important double saints day coming up. Um, it's the saint day of Peter and Paul on Monday and I thought I would say something about them because I realised that when I thought about it their stories say something about the theme of trust that we've been thinking about in our collective worship. So first let me tell you a bit about Peter and Paul. I'm going to start with Peter. OK, so Peter started his life as Simon and he was a simple fisherman. Uh, that is until he started following Jesus. Um, he made some really big mistakes in his life and sometimes he misunderstood what Jesus was saying in spectacular ways. And then when Jesus was arrested just before he was crucified, he even denied knowing Jesus at all. So Peter was Far from perfect, but Jesus still trusted him. In fact, he trusted him so much that he told him that he would be the foundation of the church, the rock on which the church would be built. And that's why Jesus gave Simon the name Peter, because Peter means rock. It's a bit confusing, isn't it? Having one name, but then being given, given another. That happens quite often in the Bible when somebody is changed and somebody does something so significant, Jesus or God gives them a new name. And so Simon becomes Peter or Simon Peter because Peter means rock. So even though Simon Peter was sometimes unreliable, he often made mistakes and bad choices. Jesus still trusted him. So that's St. Peter. Next on to St. Paul. Now he was a different character altogether. He started off as Saul, another person who changed their name. So he started off as Saul and when he was Saul, he gave Christians a really hard time. In the Bible, we hear of a time when he stood by as people threw stones at a Christian. Uh, and he himself says in the Bible that he treated Christians really badly. He persecuted them. Now, for most of us, that's not the kind of person we'd want to be friends with. And it's not the kind of person that you'd really want to have in your church. Somebody who persecutes and makes life difficult for Christians doesn't sound like the best kind of person to be in a church. But you know what? Even though Paul is or Saul is imperfect, God trusts in him. Even though he looks like he's very bad news for Christians, on the road to Damascus, Saul is struck blind and he has a vision and Jesus speaks to him from beyond the grave and Saul becomes Paul, another name change. And Paul becomes one of the most important leaders in the whole church. So again, even though Saul, or Paul as he becomes, looks like a lost cause, God trusts in him, Jesus trusts in him, 
and he becomes one of the most important saints in the whole history of the church. Now, in our lives, it's sometimes easy to write people off. Do you know what that means? To assume that because they've done something wrong, they won't amount to anything, that they can't be trusted with anything important. You can't tell them anything that's important to you because they will just share it with everybody. You can't trust them to do what they're going to say because they always let you down. But God shows us with St. Peter and St. Paul that even if we make mistakes, even if we make some spectacular mistakes, we all have the potential to be great. God also shows us that even when it's hard to trust in someone, or it's hard even to trust in yourself, that God is always there and God is always willing to trust in us. So when you feel a bit wobbly, like you maybe can't do something or something's too frightening or too scary, just remember that like Peter and like Paul, God believes in you and your abilities and he believes also in the fact that you're trustworthy. God trusts in you too. You just need to believe and trust in yourself and you can do anything you want to do. Isn't that amazing? How these two figures from 2,000 years ago can show us just how much God trusts in us, even if sometimes we don't think we can do it. I think that's great. Um, and hopefully you can take that away uh, and let that help you to be the best that you can be today in your schoolwork, in your friendships and everything that you do together. So we're going to finish off by saying together the school prayer. Let's pray. So if it helps to put your hands together and to close your eyes to stop you fidgeting and to concentrate on the words, then do that. And if you want to make it your prayer, then say Amen at the end. Dear God, we thank you for our school family. Help us grow together in our learning, in our friendships and in our faith. We pray through Jesus Christ, our friend and our saviour. Amen. Thanks very much. Enjoy the lovely weather and I'll see you again next week. Bye.